made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1 and a new book right here called Wendy's Got the Heat. That's number nine. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. You don't attack my family, man. You got to be out your fucking mind, lady. I'm in jail. They reporting that I'm getting in jail. I'm talking about I got in jail. Ain't this uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams. She was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. She, she, you know, Beyonce can't talk. You all, Beyonce sounds like she's got a fifth grade education. She can't talk. I'm sorry, can you please not call her Beyonce and the Please, not. Wendy, honey, don't even, don't even uh, make me really start cursing. Uh-uh. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Let's Get Into a Podcast. I think we can all agree that Wendy Williams is ruthless. She's been chaotic throughout her career, and that's why we love her. And today, I want to talk about the feuds that she's had. She's had so many different feuds with some of your favorite artists out there, and she's never held back. So let's go ahead and get into it. To give you guys some backstory, Wendy Williams was born in July 1964. She was raised in New Jersey. She's always been a Jersey girl, and from the beginning, beginning, she's always said she's spoken too loud and too fast. Wendy was outgoing from a young age. I mean, her sister Wanda was very book smart, very uh, straight A student, so they weren't alike. Wendy was kind of the oddball of the family. Whenever Wendy went off to college, she got involved in radio. She hosted her own they write urban music show on the college's radio station. She modeled her style after Howard Stern, even dubbing herself the queen of all media in homage to Stern's title, the king of all media. Howard Stern was a big deal in radio. That's something that Wendy really appreciated because he built a whole empire around just his voice and his thoughts and this conversation. She made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1 and a new book right here called Wendy's Got the Heat. That's number nine on the New York Times bestseller list. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Now, Wendy did not get to where she has been easily. She's had to pick some fights to make a name for herself. This article writes, considering Wendy has made a career out of having a lot of opinions about Hollywood stars, she's also found herself in a feud or two. She's no stranger to a good back and forth, and that's why I wanted to start with Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. Okay. My child is smart. Now, back in the day, Wendy did not let Whitney live in peace. She constantly reported on stories of, you know, Whitney Houston using drugs, her erratic behavior, her marriage to Bobby Brown and how bad it was. Now, Wendy was constantly talking about Whitney and begging her to come onto the show. And eventually, you know, Whitney Houston decided to call in. This was back in 2003. And right from the start, their conversation was tense and Wendy was not backing down. Whitney confronted Wendy about constantly constantly speaking about her personal life and scolded her for doing so. In my opinion, it seems like Wendy was way too ready for this interview. She had all of her punches ready to go and it got really awkward. Here's a clip of their conversation. Do you regret Diane Sawyer interview? No, why should I? Well, I didn't exactly show you in the best light. You don't think so? Well, you know, Wendy, you don't show yourself in the best light. People still listen to you. Whitney went after Wendy right away, and as she should, because at this point in time, it really was the world against Whitney Houston, and she was mentally ill and struggling with drug addiction. So Whitney, as, as far as you stand with drug use, is there drug use going on at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't ask me no questions like I'm a child. You talk to your baby about her, what, what she gonna be uh, confronting what she gotta deal with. And, uh, and, and, Don't ask me like I'm a child, because I'm not a child, Wendy. My child is a little boy, and I will talk to him yeah, at drugs. Don't talk to him about that shit. Don't talk to me about that shit. But listen, Whitney, right, I, Wendy. I, I will talk to my son about drugs, because I have Don't been me, Wendy, where the world the speculates day. where you Don't are, me, which is, uh, I was a full-blown cocaine addict, so well, I, I... problem, not mine. Move on. Well, you know, that was my problem, Whitney. Uh, you helped yourself. Did you ask God to help you? And, no, I, ma I managed, thank God, because I have a good man. And, and so, and so thank God I was able to just rise and up above God, it Wendy. and quit. And all I ask is this. Okay. okay. 
I have to say Wendy is pretty good at kind of coming for Whitney, but not being as aggressive or like outright aggressive, very passive aggressive. I mean, the fact that she said like, I have a good man. Well, that's a little bit, you know, foreshadowing. We saw uh, what happened to Wendy's relationship with her good man. He wasn't really a good man when he had a whole other family, a new kid. Uh, a brand new house that Wendy had paid for for the mistress. So yeah, not that great of a guy. So don't throw the, you know, the stones at the glass houses, right? Is that the saying? So recently I was hearing that you were trying to trim the budget, which by the way, Whitney, I thought that this was something- very I mean, who the hell are you the judge made Who's calling you and telling you? Um, uh, well, I got this story from a gossip named Steve Hers. You ever hear of him? No. Well, like you said, gossip. Yeah. Steve yeah. Hers is a West Coast correspondent, and um, we we uh, I communicate with all the different gossips. Uh, it's it's what we do, you know. Uh, you guys are all going to have a gossip lunch, huh? Something like something like that. <laughs> Eddie I like how these stories used to spread back in the day, like with, you know, these people having phone conversations and sending emails to each other. Opposed to social media, information could be spread so quickly, it could disappear so quickly. Back then, it really was like sourcing. And you could hear in like Winnie's reaction that she's kind of like, wait, what? Who told you that? Like, how did you get this information? Get me please. Listen, they were saying that you were, uh, you cut your mother's, um, you don't know what the f allowance you don't make me curse on a video I'm, I'm trying to be you know come on well steve was saying it was from about like sixteen hundred dollars a week to about five hundred dollars a week there's I'm a to kiss my okay and then that never happened i don't even know what the you're talking about well, I have no idea what you're talking about, Wendy. Now, if Wendy is just like spreading BS, I can understand why Whitney would be mad because I would be like, okay, we're on live radio. Like people are listening to this. You're saying these things and you got me here, which is making it more like, I guess, legit. So if someone else is going to report on it, they're going to be like, oh, in this interview with like Whitney Houston, opposed to just Wendy, like talking about what she's heard on the street, she's actually confronting her, which kind of implicates Whitney and Whitney also seems very caught off guard. When your husband was was um, incarcerated for those few days. What types of things do you tell her concerning, like, do you say, like, daddy's away visiting Boston? Or? I don't want to be talking to a f she was, She's a fed patient. She's a child who has intelligence. Okay. My child is smart. No, what I'm I talk to her, shut your mouth. I talk to her like she's an intelligent human being, okay? And I give her just as much as she can handle for a nine-year-old because I'm her mother, okay? And that's how we deal with it. Never mind what I told her, but she know the deal. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Um, it got so heated. Also, I just remembered how her daughter died, like died as well, right? Like of an overdose as well, I believe. So unfortunate. So sad that what happened to Whitney Houston and her family. And yeah, I wonder how Wendy feels like nowadays. I mean, we don't even know like what's going on with Wendy. I mean, she hasn't been spotted in over 200 days. Now let's move on and talk about Wendy's feud with Judge Mathis. I need to check you in the rehab and pray for you. Well, you need help, sweetie. Back in the early 2000s, Wendy and Judge Mathis went at it on her radio show. He was there to promote his book, but Wendy had other intentions. In the interview from the Wendy Williams Experience, Judge Mathis gave Wendy a very bitter taste of her own medicine. Instead of asking the judge about things in his book, Wendy began to ask him about his alleged affair. She brought up a woman who was trying to sell her story to the tabloids, claiming that she'd had an affair with him. As soon as Wendy tried to bring it up, the judge stopped her in her tracks and checked the hell out of her. He accused her of getting a high before the interview and much more. He went all the way off on Wendy and stated that she admitted that she once was on cocaine and could possibly still be taking the drug because of her nasal passages and constant cold. He claims that she was using the excuse of having a cold or being sick or allergies to cover up her drug use, which I remember in college watching her show, she always had like a Q-tip to like clean up her eyes or like her nose and like maybe that was her excuse. Oh my gosh, this judge told her that he heard that she was bisexual and that she had eight procedures to remove her child. Okay, we need to go ahead and listen to this interview. Let's go ahead and listen to tidbits of this interview because it is intense. That might not be true according to you what about is? this woman that you, that allegedly you, you slept with, Wait, you allegedly got her pregnant. Her. Uh, listen to, the, just pregnant. let me draw up the skeleton judge part. and then you fill part. in the meat. Wendy, I didn't read that part. Now let, you making that up. Okay, let me now draw up. WBLS about to be sued for 
defamation. You gonna make some stuff. Okay, up Judge, here. you it are wasn't even alleged. Okay, now, that's court. called defamation. All right. All right, that's called defamation, Wendy. Okay, she did not allege that. All right, look, I'll tell you what she alleged. It wasn't that. All right, you tell me what she alleged, she Judge, alleged in all of your she anger. Alleged that she, I'm not angry. Yes, now. you are. She yes, you are. She, I'm not angry. Okay. Not Wendy calling him angry. Of course he's angry, especially if he's trying to keep this on the down low. Right. And Listen. I don't know the woman, never met her, never used cocaine. Now, let's talk about fueling your stuff. You, on the other hand, have admitted to being addicted to cocaine. Absolutely. Secondly, you continue to show symptoms of your addiction. Okay. Lastly, what are those symptoms you, coming? These nasal passages you keep uh, yes. coughing up. And I did Secondly, aphrin. And I did you, aphrin. This eternal cold that you continue to have. Yes, oh that yes. You have to come to work. Lastly, we can continue with what I heard about all those abortions. Like eight? You had eight wow. abortions? Wow. That's what I heard. That's the rumor. How now you want to keep fueling that? Do you, did you write about that in your book? Information that they need to get. to finance this radio show knowing that you had eight abortions, a cocaine addict, oh, and a bisexual. Cool. Now, I think we can agree in this feud, it seems like Wendy has met her match because he is really going after her. And she's like almost speechless. I mean, she can't even get a word in. I'm not mad. Anyone that knows my show know that I don't take any disrespect or I don't let anybody say here. anything they want to me without me checking them real strong and real tough. Okay. And that's what you get in the day, Wendy. You're getting a real good checking. All right. Which is what you need. And quite frankly, it's overdue. Wendy was causing so much chaos at this time on her radio show. So many people were talking about the stories that she shared and the gossip. So there were a lot of celebrities who absolutely hated her in the beginning. And I feel like that's kind of the you know passageway for a lot of people who end up talking about celebrity entertainment. Like, you know, you have to ruffle some feathers to make a name for yourself. You. So, yeah. So you don't know this woman. There you go again. Are you still getting high? Because I just saw you leave the they bathroom looking like last. you were getting high. In fact, you got white powder around your nose right I now. Know. Yes, you I do. Know, Ask you know, your colleague. You, know, you still a dope fiend? I need to check you in the rehab and pray for you. Well, you need help, sweetie. I don't know how Wendy could recover from that one. He really showed up and then dished out everything that she's been giving everyone else. A bunch of her own BS handed right back to her, which I kind of love to see. I mean, you know, Wendy lives for the drama. And that's why her feud with Method Man and his wife got way too personal. You don't attack my fucking family, man. You gotta be out your fucking mind, lady. I wouldn't even consider this drama because Wendy's pretty wrong for this. I mean, I don't mess around with cancer. And in 2006, Wendy revealed on her radio show that Method Man's wife, Tamika Smith, had been diagnosed with cancer, even though the rapper and his wife wanted to keep that information private. Method Man went on to sarcastically say that I'd like to thank Wendy for like putting that crap out there. We wanted it to be a family private matter. But yeah, like things for respecting our business, you know, sarcastically. He said, Wendy gets on the air and says, my wife is sick and she's not doing too well. And I'm like, this effing B word, man. This is the big C. I was ready. I was so mad. I was crying right there. And I'm like, I want to somebody. Damn. But uh, yeah, I'm, I don't like the idea of like, I mean, if someone has cancer, I can't imagine outing that information. That's a little bit evil. I think your wife was going through a situation just recently, man. How did that resolve itself? Everything all right now? I'd like to know how you found out. MTV. MTV. What did they say? They said that uh, you were going through something with uh, with your wife. Like, I think she was sick or something like that, right? Yeah, she was sick. Is she all right now? now? I'd like to thank Wendy Williams for bringing that to the masses because she didn't have to go on the radio and say that shit. I like to keep stuff like that private, but yeah, she was sick. I'll be feeling like, yo, that ain't nobody fucking business right there, though. That's the, I'm sorry. That's just how I feel about it and shit. That's her business. She didn't want anybody to know about it. For the media to bring that and put that shit out there like that, I think that shit is mad tacky and disrespectful. Wendy Williams did it. All right, her. She's the one that did it. You can attack me any way you want to. I'm in the entertainment business, but you don't attack my family, man. My wife ain't got nothing to do with that, man. Had all nothing to do with that. You did not have to do that. Her family members didn't even know she was sick. And everybody looking at her, staring at her. You know how uncomfortable that makes somebody feel, especially somebody that's going through chemo? Stupid ass bitch. Bad enough she didn't have her hair on her head. You think she wants people staring at her, pointing at her, talking about how sick she is? Nobody knew anything until Wendy Williams said that shit. 
But you don't attack my fucking family, man. You gotta be out your fucking mind, lady. Hearing the hurt in his voice, the anger, the pain, I mean, that makes me kind of emotional just hearing how he, like, you know, anyone that's in entertainment, they don't want their family to be involved. I, I've even had, like, even being on like, YouTube, I've had people go after my family, message them, reach out to them, and it's just, like, so, like, not okay because it's like almost like oh like if your sibling or your cousin like committed a crime but like because you're somehow related like you're going down with them like no we are individual people so it's really sad that he is in this like helpless state where like information is out there and he can't really stop it. it's kind of his fault because of his presence but really it should have never been leaked out there because anyone with some decent morals wouldn't do that but we got an interesting update more recently i mean in more recent time 2021, Wendy Williams alleges one night stand with Method Man. She said, I smoked a blunt with Method Man while I gave him a bath and it was a one night stand. Hmm, maybe that's why he really didn't like her. Wendy dropped the bomb during a radio interview just two days before the debut of her lifetime biopic, Wendy Williams, the movie. Here's a clip of Wendy sharing this moment and this story and obviously knowing it's going to upset Method Man and his wife, Tamika. The only thing I did, I, I smoked a blunt with Red Man, excuse me, with Method Man. Um, um, while I gave him a bath and it was a one night stand and, what? and, and he'll deny it. Maybe not. Now, Wendy's like telling of that story is a little bit, I don't know. It's a little like, okay, she's trying to just get past it really quickly, which sometimes to me seems like it's not as authentic. Like if you really got a story, then give us every detail of it. But, uh, Tamika, his wife said that she didn't care when she was violating my right to privacy and shared the news of my diagnosis. She, remember, she hadn't even shared it with her family yet. And um, for the record, my marriage is solid. My husband continues to enjoy a successful career and Wendy will forever be one of the most miserable B words on the planet. She says that Wendy has actually used this stupid story this lie to promote her biopic because she had nothing else to really share thank god tamika did survive her cancer i mean watching that clip of her husband you know method man getting so upset that just like shows me that like there's that true love out there and like i think it's so like if you guys know the band he is we they have so many good songs and like sad ones about like one of the couples dying like you know tragically and uh it makes me so sad but like i love a good like sad love moment and then with a happy ending besides wendy's still trying to stir up some drama but that's what wendy does and that's why she's feuded with people even like tupac see the media they make me act like i would act i'm in jail they reporting that i'm getting to jail Wendy, who notoriously spread rumors about various musicians and hip-hop artists, hopped on the radio and said that Tupac was R-worded in prison. <gasps> of course, that did not bode well with him. He was in prison for S.A., uh, to, to give you guys some context. But she claims that he was R-worded in prison by another prison mate and spreading that on the radio. In an interview, he actually brought up Wendy, saying that he doesn't really have any beef with anyone in the industry. The only beef he has is with Wendy Williams because she said that he got R-worded in jail and he felt that disrespected him and his family and what he represented. See, the media, they make me act like I would act. I'm in jail. They reporting that I'm getting in jail. I'm sitting in jail this is banging on my door going, Pah! When? When? Why you ain't say that? What's going on? I'm talking about, I got a f***ing chair. Ain't this You did an interview or something you just said today. Right? Yeah. Just about that, right? No, I didn't, I didn't even talk to them. They got that from somebody else. This other night. So Tupac does not like Wendy Williams, and he's made that very clear, and he's actually rapped about her before. They claim the song, Why You Turn Me On, is a diss record about Wendy Williams, and the second verse is specifically about her. He wrote, all my old friends busy now, my money gone, said I got R-worded in jail, picture that revenge is payback, B-word, get your something. Uh, Wendy Williams, I pray you choke on the next D. Wow. Um, he also included lines directing Wendy Williams to go to Jenny Craig and referred to her as a fat troll. Said I got in jail. Picture that. We ain't just a payback. She took that. Wendy Williams and I'm pray you fat on the next down your throat for turning on me. So you guys know, Wendy Williams was probably honored to be mentioned in one of his songs. But after he died, she actually stayed away from talking about him. Though she has admitted to accepting his payback track, 
In an interview, she expressed that she appreciated the attention she got. Wendy said, quote, I love any time somebody mentions me. Thank you, Tupac. Without those song mentions, I might not be on TV right now. There's a large segment who may never have heard about me on the radio, but they heard Tupac tell me I needed to go to Jenny Craig or Mariah Carey telling me that I'm all up in her business. So I love them for that. And that is something about being a reporter, being a journalist, being a TV or a social media personality. If you can have that engagement with those celebrities, it kind of legitimizes your playing field. Now, one person we need to talk about is Diddy because Wendy has been warning us about Diddy for a very long time. Wendy Will said she had him in a compromising position and like he was gay porn or something like that. Back in 1998, she was on radio and suggested that Diddy might be gay. Once news got to Diddy, he was so offended by the accusations, which, hmm, if it's not true, then why are you so defensive? But Anyways, he started having a full-on feud with her and was determined to get her fired. Now, Wendy received a photo of a man allegedly pulling down Diddy's shorts while he was on vacation in Cancun. She saw this photo, and that's what prompted her to bring up this theory that he may be into the men. Here's one of Diddy's former employees talking about what exactly happened. And he told a story about Wendy Williams. She got fired from Hot 97 because she had a picture of Puffy, and she was saying on air that she was going to reveal the picture. We were in Cancun. For whatever reason, dude was playing with Puff. He went behind him and grabbed his trunks and pulled them down. When he grabbed his trunk to pull them down, some girls that was taking pictures. They took the, that picture and emailed it back to Wendy Wills. <laughs> Wendy Wills said she had him in a compromising position and like he was gay porn or something like that. She was going to put it out. Puff told Hot 97 if they didn't get rid of her, before he got back in New York, that they was not going to get any music from any of his friends, any of the record labels executives that was cool with him. Before we landed back in New York, Wendy Williams was in the radio station in Philly. She was fired. The amount of power that Diddy has had for decades is so frightening. I'm, I wonder how many people who have been fired by him over the years and people who aren't even public figures. When talking about homophobia and hip hop, Wendy was quoted saying, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams, and she was practically burnt at the stake for talking about such. Now it's all come full circle, which is interesting to see how Wendy was a part of so many stories that have played out. I mean, even the Diddy one. She's been calling out his bad behavior for years now. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams, and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. Diddy was so enraged with Wendy and the fact that she could hop to another radio station, you know, a, a lesser one, but continue to work and talk about him, infuriated him. And he actually sent a girl group that he managed to go and beat her up. Wendy said once upon a time, she always says once upon a time, but there was a music mogul, Diddy, who sent his all girl group to beat my butt in front of the radio station. She said, I got off of the air one day and them, her, their names were total B words, uh, were downstairs and everybody was upstairs at the radio station looking down, egging it on, waiting for something to go down. She explained her boyfriend at the time prevented anything from happening. Here's a clip of Wendy telling this story. I remember I got off the air one day and them, <laughs> them total bitches were downstairs waiting and everybody upstairs at the radio station is looking down, egging it on, waiting for something to go down. I wasn't yet married. My knight in shining armor screeched up in his car just out of nowhere. Didn't even know. I didn't even know what was about to happen. Skell hiding like a girl. <laughs> Thanks, Skell. I'm standing in the door like what? And I'm literally about to go through now. I'm not like what? Like what? Let's fight because I'm not one of those type of broads. And plus there was three of them. The little Chinese man that drove the van. They were coming. There was no security or anything. It was just them three fighting broads. And me. And my co-workers had shot standing upstairs trying to look down to see it all jump off. They all knew. When I said goodnight to everybody, everybody's pressed up against the window. I didn't even walk or bother asking, what are you all looking for? Because you know when the clock strikes, it's time to go. It is time to go. Nobody rushes out of a place faster than me. And ain't nobody put you on? No! That's what I'm saying. Nobody put me on. They're all pressed up against the window looking down. <laughs> Those are some bad co-workers who are just going to wait and watch your downfall. Knowing what the hell was about to happen. I, I didn't get a chance to hit the sidewalk. You know what I'm saying? 
before I knew it, uh, out of nowhere, nobody called. It, it's not even like he you knew. I just it was just like weird, almost like karma. Next thing I know, he's out of the car, and uh, there's a whole bunch of rah rah going on outside, and I'm still trying to figure out what that was going on. And I send Cower and Skell out on the sidewalk, and he comes back in and says, "It's total outside," and they were they were about to set it on you. Wendy admits that her feud with Diddy was kind of not worth it. I mean, she said that he put her through hell. She said, I'll never forget, but I don't hate him for it. If you guys want more about Wendy and Diddy, we've got some videos on my main channel, but we have to talk about her feud with Beyonce. She, she, you know, Beyonce can't talk. You all, Beyonce sounds like she's got a fifth grade education. She can't talk. I mean, really, Beyonce is someone you don't want to mess with, but Wendy Williams does not hold back. The drama began in the early 2000s, around the time that Destiny's Child had experienced a shakeup. Members Latoya and Lativia had been replaced by Michelle and Farah. And that's all because these other girls were having an issue with Beyonce's father, who was managing the band. So, of course, Beyonce's spot is safe, but the other girls, they could be replaced at any point. Well, the girls decided to do an interview with Wendy on her old radio show, and at one point, Wendy chimed in, encouraging Beyonce Beyonce to go solo and repeatedly called Destiny's Child Beyonce and the girls, leading the singer to call out Wendy for insulting Kelly and Michelle. The conversation only lasted a few more minutes before it ended, but it appears to be Beyonce's last interview with Wendy. Well, it does seem like Wendy was right on this one because we see Beyonce nowadays and she definitely went solo and she killed that. The group is Beyonce and the girls, so why don't you just go solo? No disrespect to the other girls, but you know, we see how things are shaping up. You guys are on TV, the camera stays on you, you get the hottest Dior, they get your leftovers, and you know, that's a compliment to you. Why don't you just go solo? Because I had heard at one point that you, that you all, you know, Destiny's Beyonce and the girls, that you all weren't allowed to perform and do a lot of stuff. Can you please not call us Beyonce and the girls? I have to. That is definitely an insult to Kelly and Michelle. No, I like them, but the attention stays on you. In the years after this interview, Wendy continued to comment on Beyonce and her career. In 2012, on an episode of her show, The Wendy Williams Show, she was discussing Beyonce's upcoming HBO documentary, Life is But a Dream. Wendy told the audience that she planned on tuning in, but she would be using closed captioning because Beyonce sounds like she has a fifth grade education. Essentially trying to say that Beyonce sounds stupid? which I feel like is something that the Beehive is not going to accept, but here's a clip of her shading Beyonce. Well, fortunately, uh, one of the TVs in our kitchen has closed captioning, so I'll be able to understand what she says. She, 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 you know, Beyonce can't talk. <laughs> you all, Beyonce sounds like she's got a fifth grade education. She can't talk. She is so shady and nasty for that comment. She's made other statements about Beyonce in 2018. She said Beyonce needs auto-tune, and in 2019, she claimed that Beyonce is not an icon. But despite it all, Wendy once said that she insisted that she meant no harm with any of her comments, that she doesn't dislike Beyonce, she's just doing what she does. Another big-time celebrity who does not appreciate how Wendy operates is Mariah Carey. Oh, everything please, like that. Wendy, honey, don't even... Don't even uh, make me really start cursing. Mariah Carey, who is without a doubt one of the most successful musicians of all time, has found herself going up against the talk show host Wendy Williams. Their feud began way back in the 90s when Wendy had accused Mariah of having work done during a radio interview. In 2003, Mariah Carey went on to Wendy Williams' show and they were talking about her failed album and movie Glitter, which was sabotaged by her ex. Wendy also confessed to Mariah that her ex-husband, Mariah's ex-husband Tommy, offered to pay her off to spread rumors about her guests. So essentially, Wendy's like, hey, yeah, also your ex-husband who like ruined glitter and like completely sabotaged, you know, that your venture to leave him, he also has tried to pay me to spread fake news, which is really scary. I mean, can you imagine? Like, I can't imagine like sitting here and making a fake video. And like, what would I even source, you know? After Wendy asked several personal questions, she asked if Mariah has slept with Tyrese, which Mariah answered, no, we didn't. Tyrese is cool, but we did not have a thing. And that's when Mariah Carey decided to call her out on her plastic surgery. It's funny how back in the early 2000s, everyone was so shady about plastic surgery because nowadays it's like kind of normalized. Mariah said, I even bought you a bra, to which Wendy said, thank you. Both Mariah and Wendy have gone back and forth about each other's like 
breasts because Wendy is claiming that Mariah had had her work done. Mariah is shading Wendy for having her work done. It's all pretty high school petty. Mariah said, because you're saying stuff that isn't true. I was also forced to wear certain garments. Let's just say that saying that, oh, I guess Mariah would take certain like pictures and like, you know, people use padding. There is a bombshell like bra back in i just remember i had like a bunch of girlfriends you know in high school and they had like they would wear like the bombshell bra from like victoria's secret that had like the extra thick padding is that still a thing let's go ahead and listen to these two bicker back and forth and what you said about being all covered up because you i know we don't use the word hater uh -huh. but you were one of the ones that used to criticize me for like always being covered up and i was like you know i wish wendy understood this ain't my choice i understand that. So. yeah yeah when, you, when your first album came out though you was really covered up really covered Vision up love, and that was before your breast implants and oh, everything please. like that Wendy, honey, don't even, don't even uh, make me really start cursing uh -oh. because <laughs> you're those... saying stuff that ain't true. Because also, I wasn't. I was also forced to wear certain garments oh, back in those days. Oh, is that it? Let's just say that. Hey, Mariah, okay? we gotta go. Mariah, we gotta go. Mariah, Mariah I ain't studio. coming to see you now that you threw that. No, one. I was gonna Go say, on. Mariah, that comment's <laughs> not gonna stop you from coming, Your is audience it? Audience is gonna believe that shit. No, weep that one, Wendy. Uh, All right, I. Because of this kind of interaction, Mariah Carey has also included Wendy Williams in some of her music. Like in her song, Touch My Body, she's referencing Wendy's nosy ways by writing all up in my business like a Wendy interview, which I already know that Wendy Williams was probably so excited to see that Mariah was singing about her. And it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's funny. It's like not really as hateful as like Tupac's coverage was. Now, I do think Mariah and Wendy are on decent terms. Like, you know, I mean, Wendy's not really out here on the scene anymore, but I think like they are chill. They've kind of gotten over it. But someone who is so just <laughs> so like crazy on reality TV and uh, in entertainment in general is Omarosa. And Omarosa and Wendy's back and forth is really what kicked off Wendy's like show. It kind of like solidified her place there because it was so dramatic. No, I know how to chill, okay. but I will not be disrespected. The reality star, whose name is Omarosa Mangolt Stallworth, appeared on Wendy Williams' show to promote her up-and-coming book, but instead, they spent more time trading insults back and forth. Omarosa was a contestant on The Apprentice, starring Donald Trump in 2004. She also went on to work in the White House while he was president, but she, like, turned on him and like wrote a book so she's she's kind of messy but when she went on to wendy williams show to go and promote her book it got really heated and these two were on her couch just going back and forth and we need to watch it together uh keep it we've got it we've got the most hated woman on reality tv we're gonna smooth her out on this show though omarosa's here okay the most hated woman on reality tv but we're gonna smooth her out on this one wendy is a savage wait wait wait, wait. what you said you was gonna straighten me out what the hell I said, smooth you out. What smooth me out. What does that mean? We're talking, have a nice conversation. Let's have a conversation. Oh, no, I know how to chill. Okay. But I will not be disrespected. This is not the time for you to look for your moment. I invited you here. Oh, I know how to find my moment. Which is I understand. The book. We're going to we talk switch. about the book. All right, well, let's get to it, Wendy. Oh, don't, uh-uh. I want to look at it and show it to, well, and show it uh -uh. to Kenny right here. No, Kenny has the camera right here. This is the cl up close camera. Would you like it to be seen? The way that she grabbed the book, it made me, it makes me wonder if there's like, if it's just a cover with like no words inside of it. Like, is there, are there any words in it? Because why was she so aggressive with grabbing that book back? A lot of times if a book isn't finished, they'll go around and promote an empty book with just like a cover on it. So can you imagine if Wendy got her hands on that and opened it up and there was nothing? That would have been really bad for Omarosa. So you bought, um, you know, the implants for you, but you got stuff for your mother also. I heard your mother looks fantastic. We did a makeover show. We did a total makeover in Discovery Health. And I wanted to do that so that people would know about plastic surgery. You're very open. Yeah. But there are celebrities who are not. Yeah. Now, did you have a nose job? No. It looks like you had a nose job. No. Oh, okay. No, I mean, I just looked at before and after. Honey, before and after. Before and after pictures. But, but <laughs> if I can suggest, because the only thing that I've had done to my face is a little Botox, I would suggest for you some Vaseline. The lines stay. And I, would suggest, so and I would suggest a wig that doesn't sit off my head three inches. That would be my suggestion. <laughs> Thank you for coming on my Thank show. <laughs>
That is just straight up good TV right there. That is a feud I can get behind. Following Omarosa's appearance, Wendy told the AP that she thought the unprovoked aggression was a publicity stunt and called Omarosa a delusional, D-list, pathetic woman. Wendy also said that Omarosa would not be invited back on the Wendy Williams show. Though I don't think that's 100% accurate. I do think she did go back at some point and it really, you know, gave the Wendy Williams show a jump start in entertainment. Now, Ariana Grande is someone I didn't really expect Wendy Williams to have a feud with, but this article reports that it's safe to say that Wendy Williams has landed herself in hot water with a number of Ariana Grande's fans. Wendy made a few different comments about Ariana Grande and some body shaming, and of course, we do not accept that, you know, nowadays, it's not okay. Back then, maybe they all made it fun of each other for plastic surgery and boob jobs and nose jobs, but we just don't do that anymore. Wendy said, she's 21, she'll forever look 12. And I don't mean that in a good way. It's nice to look younger than you are, but when you look too young and then you're short, she's only like 4'11". I don't look at her as like a woman. There were a lot of supporters on social media saying that Wendy needed to get banned from her show, but there's also people who are supporting Wendy saying that, you know, she's just, again, doing what Wendy does. This person wrote, standing up for Ariana Grande using the hashtag cancel Wendy Williams show is not petty. It's showing people like Wendy Williams that it's not okay for people to belittle in any way. We know Ariana will never say anything back to Wendy, so uh, for, I guess, fear of it becoming a bigger story, so we are going to stand up for her, which is interesting that fans feel like so inclined to do all of this, but you know, it probably upset a lot of people. This person tweeted, you don't have to put others down to entertain people. Another one, hashtag cancel Wendy Williams show. So since you are petite and look younger, you don't deserve to be considered a woman. Another person writes, damn, a 12 year old sure does look better than me posting these very, you know, adult pictures of uh, Ariana Grande. Now there are other people who Wendy has had feuds with like Nene Leakes, Chris Brown, Leanne Rimes, Black China, Lil' Kim, Kim Zolciak Bierman. It all really surrounds how Wendy covers their personal lives online, like any news reporter does, but because she's on TV, because she's talking, because people want to hear what she says, it has impact, so they respond. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Wendy Williams is, uh, I don't think personally doing well right now. We've got a new doc you like thing coming out about her drinking problem um but supposedly that was filmed like two years ago i don't even think she wants the footage out there there's a lot to unpack there but if you guys have any other podcast topic ideas for me send me an email at sloanwellknown.com or leave a comment below and i'll see you guys in a new video well actually a new podcast soon <laughs> bye guys